welcome everyone and in case you missed my name, I'm Kanika and you must have guessed I'm leading the walk today. Yeah? Uh, this promises to be a nice sunny morning and this is going to be an active walk. So we are doing a bit of walking, fair bit of walking, almost uh, a little more than 2 kilometers along the ridge. And the walk is going to take about 3 hours and we are walking uh, up towards where the forested area is, what is today known as the Kamlan Hero Bridge. I'll talk a little more about it as we go in. Uh, I'd like to start with a background in terms of what to expect for this walk, what is this walk about, the specific theme, and then we look at the particular monuments here. There are <laughs> several big and small monuments scattered on the ridge. They're not necessarily spectacular objects of beauty and they, in fact many of them look quite run down and almost like a shack you would easily miss anywhere on the road. But the significance lies in the fact that there's a lot of history around them. Uh, but I must warn you that this is a little bit of a biased history. The, the walk is on the revolt of 1857 and you know that it's a very very significant event in Indian history as well as British history. Yeah? Uh, it depends on which side you are. <laughs> For you it would be the mutiny or the rebellion or the first war of independence. Again, like I said, depending on which side you are. Everybody in Britain has studied it as the mutiny, even though they acknowledge it as the greatest mutiny ever faced by the company. And everybody here in the subcontinent would have studied a, a wide range, you know, from mutiny to the first war of independence. Yeah? So, the bias I mentioned is the fact that most sources we have, all information, most information we get for this time, this uh, rebellion, comes from contemporary British sources. So it's the officers who survived, who were part of the action in the rebellion, faced the rebels, who were writing their diaries, their letters, or um, people who, once the mutiny was suppressed, once the rebellion was suppressed, people who came into India and talked about the kind of things that happened during the rebellion. So most of these actually happen to be people from the Englishmen who are writing about this. So there's an obvious uh, bias. And the physical remnants of the rebellion, you know, monuments, places where these where the action was played out, memorials, these are all of course for the winning side. They aren't any memorials for the rebels. Yeah? They ended up losing and history most of you would know is written by the victors. So there's a bias in this and most of the accounts, the blow by blow accounts of how the rebellion played out, what was happening at this particular juncture, they, most of these accounts come from British sources. So there's a problem here but we'll try and keep this in mind as we go so that there's a bit of a balance in the narrative. Uh, we're starting with uh, a monument well, not really a monument, a building, which really doesn't have much to do with 1867 specifically. It's a colonial period art uh, building and it's quite interesting, a bit of gossip about it as well. So we'll start our work from the Vice Chancellor's office. behind these huge grills, uh, it's typical of colonial architecture, yeah? This is how <coughs> the British built in India and most monuments, most colonial buildings look like this, the Connaught place looks like this, right? Uh, this is the Vice Chancellor's office now, Delhi University Vice Chancellor's here. Um, this building is built by the British after 1857 and it was used as a forest lodge and a circuit house. I'm talking about the 1870s, 1880s. And a little later, when the British decided to shift the capital from Calcutta to Delhi, this is the beginning of the 20th, uh, 20th century. Yeah? When they decided to shift the capital, this is, uh, and while New Delhi area was coming up, while they were doing the <laughs> construction at the Raisina area, this is where the Viceroy lived. So this was also the Viceregal Lodge. And the bit of gossip I mentioned about this is that it said that the registrar's office here 
that was the place where you've all heard of uh, all kinds of gossip about Edwina, Mount Patton and Nehru. Yeah, Mount Patton was the last um, viceroy. Edwina was his wife. Nehru was the prime minister in making, and apparently they, this is a love triangle. Yeah, so there's lots of gossip books about this. So the registrar's office here was is a, is the room where Mount Patton proposed to Edwina. Yeah. And to complete the triangle, you have Nehru's bust right there. So. <laughs> now, um, most, I mean, like you can see it's not a very accessible place, but they do open it up once in a while on special permission. Yeah, and once in a while they've also organized uh, walks on 1857, an exhibition particularly. And uh, like I said earlier, this was the Vice Regal Lodge. Now it's the vice chancellor who holds the bars here. You might have read about it in the papers. <laughs> so, so the tradition continues. Yeah. <laughs> Come. So we'll go back to where we started from, and then across the road.